Hello everyone, it's Brickmaster here, and today I have a very, very large LEGO set to review. This is the LEGO Mars Mission 7699 MT101 Armored Drilling Unit. This set was released in 2004, comes with 635 pieces, and was rated for ages 8 to 14. So this set is very large, comes with 6 minifigures and 2 vehicles, so it was definitely not a very stingy set. So, first we'll look at the box. I'll move all of these other things away. Just to make a bit more room because the box is very, very large as you can see. So, this is the front as you can see. And, oops, this is the back. Shows you the other set that were released in 2007 from the Mars Mission line. Here are some of those. I do have that one. Stuff to review it. This, uh, the Claw Tank Ambush set. But, yes, that is that. It sort of styled like some of the older, much older set boxes where you can lift open this. And it shows you all the some of the features. Here it says recon transport. Here it says shooting function. Here it says transport bike. And here it says independent suspension. And it shows you how the independent suspension is operated. Very nice picture of the set. Very large, of course. Here's the instructions. One of them came in pretty bad condition since um, back then instructions weren't put in those cardboard, well, aren't in plastic and basically pressed against the cardboard to keep them wrinkle free, but sadly that wasn't around. But one instruction booklet comes with 48 pages, including the back, and the other one comes with the same amount, 48. So, they match each other. Next, we'll look at the minifigures. So, there are three astronauts, which are the, the good guys, and there are two aliens that are supposed to be the bad guys. And the aliens don't like to really stand all the time, so they might fall over. So I will put one minifigure on here. So this is the first astronaut. All of the astronauts are identical. So they all look the same, of course. Here at the back, it says oxygen. So, of course, that's what they need to breathe. They have a printed tube, which is fine with me, because if it weren't printed, it, some of the minifigures... Well, of course, the minifigures wouldn't be able to sit on those molded chair pieces. I can see why they wanted them to do that. Not in this set, but... It's probably some of the other sets they did that, but here's the minifigure's face. I'll remove the, um, the helmet, and there it is. And that's that minifigure. The second minifigure, of course, looks identical until you take off the helmet. And that is his face. The third minifigure is a duplicate of one that I already have in the um, in two other sets. I have two of these, and his face looks like that. So that's it for the astronaut figures, and now we'll move on to the aliens. They're both identical, so I'll only show you one. This is what it looks like. These aliens are... Uh, they're not that great, because all they can do is this. Bend forward, and bend back. Plus, they do have a little glow-in-the-dark thing that's right underneath that hole in their chest. So that might be something that you'll want to try, but it works a little bit. It's not that much. And I've heard if you have these sets for a while, the glow-in-the-dark feature won't really work as well, so... Uh, no, if that's really that great of a thing, and of course here's the second one. Next, we'll look at the um, 
disposable alien ship comes with this set. This is it. It is pretty decent. It's around the same size as most of the other ones that come with the set. They have that same kind of C shape. That looks more like a C. But they can all do like this. Most of them can. And this one has two cannons that can't shoot anything, but that's okay. And here this tail fin can move up. Probably good for flying. And also this can move down. And this can move up. And right here there are two studs that are used for a minifigure. And because these there are no stud holes at the back of the minifigure's legs. You'll need to use that to be able to put them in. And this can move up and down, of course, and this moves back down, and you can see that the minifigure is in his ship. This has some gem pieces which look like crystals, and I guess that's basically what they are, because they're used to power things. Reminds me a lot of power miners and rock raiders to other beams that use crystals for power. And there are some very nice stickers that are here, which I do like. So yeah, that's it for the ship. Here is of course the very large armor drilling unit. So I'll just move from front to back. Here at the front, of course, is the main cockpit and you open this up and it has a lot of room in it but it says that you're supposed to put one minifigure inside so I guess I'll go and do that fit him inside but I'll have to put these levers up levers, same thing and fit him inside and there he is. The, the control sticks sort of, they don't have any friction, so they move down and up pretty easily. I don't know why that happened with the set. I never have that in others, but here are some printed pieces for controls that are right there. They're pretty common. Here at the front are two headlights that are used to see if everything is dark on the... And, of course, here they have that strange gray piece that is usually used for horse-drawn carriages, but they use it here for a little fancy detailing on the cockpit. Here's some stickers that have the set number, which a lot of sets have. Any number that they really have is usually from the set. And here at the top is a weapon that you can fire here. You push this down, and this ball fires out. Don't need to really show you that, but that's what that is supposed to do. And here is a large, just move this like that, and you just pull this down, and then you can drill for crystals. I like how the drill is made, it's not some boring looking one piece drill, it has those, these things, and it has a, a worm gear, and it has this Mars mission drill. It's pretty nice and it retracts. And it has this hose that's probably supposed to fill it with energy and such. So, here is this part, and it says Rhino 1, it says Captain Milanovic, the digger, it says Caution Engine, those are all stickers. These move like so, and you can pull this back. Inside, there are two balls that are used for weaponry. And it doesn't say that you're supposed to use it for the weaponry. It's just that I thought that since there's a space and I don't want to leave these lying around somewhere, I'll just use this space for storage. But as you saw, this thing moves back, and this is a ship that can be detached like this. And I'll just move this away for a minute. And right here in this ship, you move this forward. 
and now this ship has space for one minifigure to be the pilot and he has some controls right here and whoops the vehicle is sort of moving towards me and you can put one minifigure in it like this but he has to lie back pretty far for him to wait I'm not putting him in the right position he has to go right there and you push this back and he's in and he has one sticker console piece that you can use for targeting most likely because it has that little I don't know what to call it but you see it when in warplanes and such, but here it says Rhino 2 because Rhino 1 is this large vehicle and this is the ship that is Rhino 2. So here these wings also move up and down like that. And they have a large cannon on them. This one says Laser 2 and the one on the other side says Laser 1. And on this side you can see that it has this strange tube, and that can move forward, and you can drop it out. Here it has a little picture that's on a sticker again that basically shows an alien. And what you're supposed to do is that you're supposed to get one of these and put your alien on it, put him inside, and capture him. And this little piece right here is supposed to keep it from falling out. So it doesn't always work. Some like that one just fell out. And that's probably the only bad thing we're really about to set. These do fall out sometimes, even though they're not supposed to. And another thing that the ship can do is that on the back is this little almost motorcycle thing. And it opens like that. And you're supposed to put a minifigure inside. And again, he has to lie back very far because you want to be able to sit in there with the windscreen down so that's how he is and that, I, that's the first thing that you build in the set it's a pretty nice motorcycle I just wish it had controls and the minifigure didn't have to lie back so far and it basically rolls back in there and you can see the wheels sticking out from the bottom you use the same thing to sort of get the ship back in like that and close it all up like that so that is it for the ship in the top part now we'll just look at the suspension and there's one part that of course moves and there's also a second. So the first part moves like that. So if you're moving it over terrain, and there is one one side of the vehicle is higher than the other. Well, not higher than the other. The um, the ground is higher than on one side than the other. So it would do this. And here at the back, it does this. So if you're going over a hill, it would do that. So the back can move a bit as well. These are very large wheel pieces that are used here, and bionicle pieces are used to kind of hold them from this side, and there are some Technic pieces to hold it from that side, and these pieces are supposed to look like springs that really don't work that well if they're on an axle, but if you have one of them in your hand, you can contract them. So that is basically it for the set, I think. Hope I'm not forgetting anything. I don't think I am, but yeah, that's basically it for it. I hope you enjoyed it. I really enjoyed building this. It's a very um, satisfying. It's very satisfying once you finish it because it really t takes a lot of work with the Technic stuff. Because if you can see through there, it's basically all Technic just the couple pieces that are put on here, but everything else is really technic. So, 
lots of pins and uh, axles and things like that. So it is a bit challenging. I don't really find Legos chal well, I don't find Lego such challenging at all, but this one for a Lego set was challenging because you have to um, look closely, of course, to see if you're putting the pin in the correct area and not one hole too high or too low because that will mess up the entire thing. Luckily, I didn't do that, but it is something that I would pay attention to if I were building this again. So, yes, I hope you enjoyed this, and I will see you all later.